serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. We all bow our heads, please. Uh, Lord, thank you again for another Sabbath day. The sun is shining and you've given us the opportunity to come together in one place to worship you, Lord. Help us to appreciate the special opportunity we have today to be in contact with you and be in contact with other members who are around us, Lord. Help us to praise you and help us to worship you in a special way today, we pray. In your name, amen. Please take a seat. So, um, good morning, everybody. I've been reminded to welcome those who are online as well. Good morning, or whenever you watch us, it might be 2027 20, when you watch us. So, good morning or good afternoon then as well. Um, if you enjoyed the service, I would suggest that uh, you take the opportunity at some point in time to come and see us at Boundary Road. We'll be very welcoming and warm to you then as well if you arrive. I want to say hello to everybody who's here physically as well. Um, there are some faces which I recognize from times before and some faces which I don't recognize quite so well. So I want to give the opportunity to anybody here who is not normally coming to this church to either wave at me and say I'm a visitor, welcome me, or to give me a wink, uh, a wink uh, I'll point you out. Oh yes, brother, would you like to introduce yourself or would you like someone to introduce you? Andy from Kilburn, nice to, have, nice to have you with us, Andy. And is there anyone else that I might be missing out here? Or if you're next to somebody who you don't quite recognize and you think they're a visitor, give me a nudge and you can introduce them to me? No? Okay, well, I'd like to say... Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Well, my niece, Hannah, is not really a visitor, but she has returned. Amen. Amen. It's very lovely to see you. I'm glad you brought the, that shiny thing in the sky with you. That's very helpful as well. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I'm, I'm Dennis. This is my wife, Michelle, and we're trying to coordinate things today, trying to make things run less bumpily, or maybe even smoothly, but certainly less bumpily. Um, and, and now we're going to welcome you in a, in a more energetic way. Yes, but before we do that, those who are here this morning for Sabbath school, just raise your hands. Shame on those who aren't. Oh. No, you missed something today. We had the children who came and did their 13th Sabbath presentation. Shall I just get an amen again for amen. them? Because they did a really good presentation. And it got me thinking that, you know, we like to have our thinking caps on. So I've got a riddle for you. And um, there are two answers that you can give for this riddle. So I'm looking for two specific answers. Um, let's see who can get this. Okay, the riddle is, it can fill a room, but it doesn't take up any space. Air is, air is a good answer, but it's not the answer I'm looking for. God expands beyond this room, so I'm good, but not that one, it's something else. Holy Spirit, along the same line with God, but not quite that one. I heard somebody say it, smile, wonderful, and I love to see that smile, Jen, fantastic. So that's the first one. Oh, sorry. No, she didn't come to me. I was going to say atmosphere. Come on, that's yeah, a good answer. Well, it's kind of everywhere, but no, that's not, the, that's not it. It's another one. It's another one. Love is good. Joy is good, but yeah. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Shall I give you a little bit of a hint? Yes. It starts with L. That is good. That is good as well, but it's not the one I was looking for. Pardon? Ah, Pastor got it. Light. Okay. Light and smiles. Fantastic. We have both today. Yes? Yes? Wonderful. So we're going to demonstrate that we have both today. The light makes us feel energetic and it makes us feel like, you know, there's something springing with joy that's coming. So I want to see you 
exercise that today. And to do that, we're going to sing um, a welcome song. I don't know if the praise team have one, a welcome song, or if we can sing smile. Pardon? Greet somebody. Okay, we'll greet somebody. I was thinking smile a while, but it's all right. We'll greet somebody. That's fine. We can do that. But while you're greeting, we want to see the smiles, okay, as you are on to everyone. to see the, the blood pumping, people moving around and greeting each other. It was wonderful. Um, you're going to have an opportunity to get that blood into your lungs and sing. We're going to start our, uh, our praise and worship session. And we're going to start our praise and worship session asking the praise team to come forward. And we'll start with hymn 359. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. So it'll be hymn 359 for the tech team.
Okay, we're going to continue our worship. Um, we're singing Bringing in the Sheaves. Sowing in the morning, sowing kick seeds of kindness. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Okay, well, let's hear it in your worship. Okay, I can almost see it on your faces. Yes, I can now see it on some of your faces. So let's praise and worship today. So it's a joy to be here. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And it's, one, it's a wonderful opportunity that someday we may not have. So let's make the most of it while we do. So we'll just wait for the lyrics to reappear, which they will any second now. There we are. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness. Sowing in the noontide. And I know you know the rest. that we're hearing throughout the songs today it's about bringing people to Jesus amen so let's sing together we shall come in. let's hear the words sowing in the sunshine, in the sunshine. shadows next verse sowing sowing in sowing the sunshine. in the shadows on the next verse going forth with weeping Us welcome, we shall come rejoice. Wonderful men, everyone, everyone. Bring in. bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Everyone going forth. Going forth, oh sorry, we've done, let's do this verse again, going forth, I'm sorry about this, but this is such a wonderful song, amen, and, and this time we're all going to sing that last verse again, and the, together. And the real difficulty is that we can't see the lyrics, <laughs> so, um, so we rely on you to help us, okay, okay, going forth, with going weeping. forth, going forth with weeping, showing for the master, Lord, the Lord's the same. sing of um, the light that we have, the light that we're burning until, as we wait for Christ's return, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So everybody 
Everybody knows this. If you don't, you'll learn it quickly. Okay. Let's hear and see your light. This, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Gave it to me. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. to approach the throne of grace um, and so we want to take a position of prayer as our praise team leads us into a song as we prepare our hearts for prayer we'll sing it's me O Lord standing in the need of prayer it's me
Let us pray. Our kind, loving Heavenly Father, we are so very grateful that we can come into your house to worship you and to give you praise. Also, Father, for those who are worshiping online, it's a wonderful privilege to be able to join with us to give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, we thank you that you are our God and we can approach you because you are approachable. A matter of fact, Father, you said, come, come, come to me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So we're just so happy, Father, to be in your house. And Lord, we just ask today that you would forgive our sins and our trespasses. Father, we've sinned against you in word, in thought, in deed. And we are sorry. And we know, Lord, that the only way that we can be forgiven is by approaching the throne of grace and asking for Jesus to wash us clean and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit so that we will get this revival, we come alive and we really, really worship you because you're beautiful, Lord. You're wonderful, Lord. And we're so privileged, Lord, to come into your presence. Lord, we thank you for the week we've had. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Father in heaven, for protecting us from the enemy who wanted to destroy us this week in various ways, in our health, in our finances, in our friendships, in our family. But God, we are overcomers today. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for what you have done. Father in heaven, I put this church before you, including those online as part of your church. You said the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So we know we are victorious. And when you, we come to you, we know you answer our prayers. In fact, Father, you said to your servant, before you call, I heard, and while you're speaking, I'm yet answering. So, Father, I present your people before you. Some are still suffering, pain. Um, Father, we ask that you'd heal according to your will. We ask, Father, that you give the wisdom so that to the the medical fraternity, that they'll know what to do in helping your people. Because Lord, you promised that you'd give this knowledge on this earth so for our benefit. So we ask you, Lord, that you would move according to your will. And Father, we pray for those who are grieving today. We think of Sister Karina, who has lost her father. And we think of others who are still grieving, Father because they've lost their loved ones. We ask you, God of all comfort, that you will draw near and that you would bless and that you would encourage that this is not the end. This is certainly not the end. But Lord, one day, if they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, when you come, they will rise and they will meet you in the air and they'll be together with you, Lord. So, Father in heaven, grant them comfort. Lord, we pray also um, for those who are going through financial situations, for debt. We know that debt, Lord, can be a stranglehold. We ask, Father in heaven, that you would give them, help them to see your strategy in your word over debt. Lord, it is in giving and um, being sensible that we come out of debt, but it's all in your word. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do for them. Lord, we pray for our young people, 
Some of them, they're on ho we are on holidays, teachers and students. We ask God for a special blessing as we go through this time that we will recognize the sacrifice that you made by giving your only son so that we would have salvation. Lord, we pray that you keep them through this time. Our young people, those who are in work, that you bless them and help them to be faithful to you. Father, we pray for those, the little ones, that you keep them safe in all the activities that they will engage in. Lord, we give you praise and give you thanks. We ask that you surround this area with your precious blood, Lord Jesus, and your Holy Spirit, and you draw men to yourself. And Lord Jesus, I ask also that you bless the word that you have given today to your manservant. Lord, that it will come with power, that he will decrease and you will increase and get all the glory and all the praise and that your people will truly be edified. Lord, we present everything in your hands, our musicians and all those who participate in the service today, all those online, Lord, we pray for them, that your Holy Spirit will touch their hearts and speak to them in a very personal way. And Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name, amen. everyone. It is now time for the tithes and the offering. And before the praise team and the ushers come forward, I'd like to read a reminder how great our God is from First Chronicles 29, 11 to 13. And it says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is a kingdom. You are exalted as a head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. The priest team will come forward now. So as the offering is collected, being collected, we're going to sing give and it will come back to you.
the parade, please? Dear Eventer Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts, acknowledging that everything we have comes from your abundance, provision. You are the source of everything we own. We present our tithes and offering with willing and a thankful attitude. We believe your word and honor it by putting our faith into action through giving. We pray that these gifts might be an offer of worship for you. Help us to use it. These gifts for the furtherance of your purpose in the place and in this place and for the benefit of those in need. I ask all these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath Church family. It's a wonderful day, isn't it? The sun is shining and you know God is just blessing us today. You know, when 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 one hurts, we hurt as well. But when one celebrates, we celebrate as well. Amen? Amen. And we just want to thank God for this beautiful couple who have been committed to this church and the, and to each other and to God. And um, we just want to congratulate them and just thank God for them. 50 years anniversary, wedding anniversary. They're a marvelous thing. <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, we're not going to kid ourselves. We, we know the devil is doubling his efforts to hurt families now, to separate families, to turn um, husbands against wives, children against parents, parents against children, and we know what the world is, 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 is turning into. We know the devil is scheming against family. We want to thank God for this family who has kept the faith and, and kept going, you know, ups and downs, and they're still together, and we just thank God that he, he and, 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 and for them, that they have allowed God to lead them 50 years and we just want to say amen and to give um, Mary a little token here from us from Morton Soul Church congratulations may God come to bless you in your marriage and Larry and we also have a little token from the church which I will read and I know this comes as a surprise to both of them especially Sister Mary And it reads, Happy 50th Anniversary. Love is patient. Love is kind. It always protects. Always trusts. Always hope. Always preserves. May God continue to bless and keep you, Calvin and Mary Penedo. And they got married on the 30th of March, 1974. So on behalf of the church, presenting this to And at this time, I'll ask a young lady who had her birthday this week, Amen. Sister Hector, who will come forward and pray for the couple. But before that, Sister Mary, you'd like to say anything to the church? <laughs> it's a very big surprise. Thank you very much. 
I've always loved Walthamstow Church, and it's also 50 years of being at Walthamstow Church. Amen. So I thank God for this blessing to live today, to see 50 years of being together, 50 years of being here, wor worshiping. And I thank you very much. This is a wonderful church, and I love my brethren. I love every one of you. I thank God for you. God has been good, Amen. and I want to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise because he has been really good all through the years. Amen. Amen. It's indeed a joy standing here with Mary and Calvin. I remember Mary and Calvin coming to Walthamstow Church. Yes, two young people. <laughs> and I was, it's just lovely being with them and we have kept the friendship over the years. Never a crossword. Just love through Christ. And I would just like to give God thanks and praise for blessing me with another year of life yesterday. Amen. 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 I won't tell you how much it is. <laughs> but it's just wonderful to know the Lord and have him in your life. And I recommend him to everyone, young and old, male and female, because he is my stay. He is my refuge. He is my strength. And at this time, I will just ask us to bow our heads in prayer while I pray for Brother Calvin and Sister Mary. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy most holy and righteous name. Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you and we praise you for the power of prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that through Jesus, your Son, our Savior, we can approach your mercy seat in heaven at this time. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father, who prompts us to come to you, for he knows just how much we need you. And Lord, today we are thanking you for the lives of Brother Calvin and Sister Mary. You have kept them united in marriage for 50 years. Lord, we give you all the praise all the honor, all the glory for who you are. And Father, we're asking that you will continue to bless them. We pray, Lord, that you will just shower your blessings upon them. We thank you for keeping them. We thank you for protecting them by day and by night. We thank you, Father, for keeping them well. We thank you for blessing them with their three children and their grandchildren. Father, it's a family that we love. And we pray now that you will have full control. We pray, Lord, that whatever is ailing Brother Calvin with his shoulder, in the name of Jesus, you are the divine healer. Amen. And we pray, Lord, that you will bring some relief from the pain. And we ask, Father, that as they celebrate, that they will continue to give you the thanks, continue to walk with you hand in hand, because you have done all for them. So, Father, bless us now and keep us faithful and true to you, we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 Thank you also for the presents and the flowers. Thank you. And the children come forward for the children's story, please.
So I have a question for you today. Who knows what a talent is? Something what you're good at, correct. So does any, everyone has talents. So what are some of your talents? different talents here. That's very, very good. Um, I have another question. Who knows what witnessing means? Something happened. Yep, watching something happen. There is also another meaning for witnessing. Do you know? Watching something happen, yeah? There's another meaning of witnessing. So we can also witness by using our talents and our actions and our words to show God's love to other people. So I have a story for you today. So there was a lovely village. The village was very nice, but all the people in it were sad. Everyone was miserable, everyone was fighting, and there was a little bird. Hayden, you're going to be my little bird. <laughs> a very tall little bird. Called Pip. And this bird was looking around and he saw that everyone was miserable. And he saw a group of children. Can I have three volunteers? Ruben? No. Okay, there we go. Three children. And the bird saw the children and they were all miserable and none of them were playing with each other. And so the bird he thought. I have a talent. He was very talented. He was a very talented singer. So I thought, I'm going to fly over to them and I am going to sing for them. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And the children were so happy. They thought, wow, he's singing. And it's amazing. Come And they were immediately happy by the singing. So they thought, hmm, I wonder what talents we have. So they were thinking amongst themselves and they found out that Noah here, Noah, what was your talent? Talking. Talent for football and basketball, so sports. Alicia, talent? Swimming and running. Swimming and running, lots of sports. Again. Music. Music. So they had lots of different talents. So they thought, well, there's so many children here and people in the village who are still sad. So we're going to use our talents to make all the other children happy. So they went around and they used all their talents. They went around and they used all their talents and they were sharing them with the village. So some were drawing. Some were baking, some were singing, playing with other children. And then after a while, after a while, every single child was happy. And every single child had God's love. And the village was happy, the village was bright and a happy place to be. So what can you learn from this story? Everyone here, all of you guys, have lots and lots of different talents, which is great. But you need to use your talent to be a witness to other people so you can share God's love with them. Can someone come up and read a verse for me? 
It's Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advice for us to do. Amen. So this verse tells us that we need to use all our talents to, use, to do God's work and to share God's love. Um, so someone pray for us? Someone want to pray for you? Anyone? Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us be together at church. Uh, thank you for um, the children's story. Please bless everyone that's here and not here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Go back to your seats now. Remember to be a light and use your talents to witness. Amen to the children's story. I want to thank Leah for using her talents to teach the children about talents. Um, you know, if you ask officiating elders which role they find most difficult to fill, it's getting an adult to do a children's story. Now, I don't know why, because most adults, once upon a time, were children. It's true. But somehow that we seem to have this difficulty with doing that and, and thank you for that children's story, we've done really very well. So we want to thank everybody who's been part of the program today and I'm here to make sure that uh, Michelle doesn't forget any names and she's here to make sure I don't forget any names. And equally we can spread the blame if we do. So I want to be, say thank you to those who are in the tech team upstairs, amen? amen? It's true because the program really doesn't work very well unless they are involved. They get the microphones up and ready before people are ready. They get the PowerPoint screen on board. Uh, and they help things to run more smoothly. So thank you, team. We want to thank, thank you. We want to thank our musicians. We want to thank uh, Jude, who I think we're all a little familiar with. Um, Ashley and Dion, who are also familiar with. Thank you, James. We want to thank the secretarian, um, uh, Brother Joseph Lindo. Yes, I know. We have to throw that in there. Um, our praise and worship team. Sister Angela, Sister Selena, Sister Juliet. Remember all three, very good. Uh, thank you for um, standing in and doing a praise, to, praise and worship for us. Uh, Sister Prudence for our prayer. Thank you for taking us to the throne of grace with prayer and for uh, the offering from Sister Winston. Um, so, did I say Winston? Winston, thank you. Uh, we are going to, in a moment, have Brother Stuart doing our scripture reading. Amen. And then we're going to have our sermon from Pastor, but I think Larry's going to come up and introduce our pastor to us. But in truth, I think you need very little introduction. You've been here before, but it'd be nice. And uh, just as we're talking, sorry, talking about giving thanks, we forgot to give thanks to those who celebrated their birthdays oh. this month. I know we know Sister Hector celebrated, but we had some other celebrants. So can we just wait to see the hands of those who celebrated their birthday for this month? Oh. Calvin, yes, well, well done as well. Ah, yeah, Stuart, Joy, oh, they're lots. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> so we have quite a few celebrants, and we're going to hear from one of our celebrants who had his birthday yesterday, who's going to be doing our scripture reading today, um, Stuart um, Tagara. But we want to say thank you to everyone who have joined us online. Uh, we would love to see you here at some point in time, but thank you for tuning in and thank you for your comments as well that you post um, on our social media. And of course, church wouldn't be church without you all. So we thank God that you are able to be here and we thank God for the freedom that we have, that we can actually come and worship here with our smiles in his light. Okay, so we we'll turn over to Stuart now who's going to bring our scripture reading for us. Good afternoon, church. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Mark 5, verse 18 to 20. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. 
However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has, and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that, all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Amen. Amen. Afternoon again, church. Right, my task is to introduce the speaker of the afternoon. Normally, we say the speaker of the hour. I'm not sure if Pastor would want to be with us for an hour and a half, but an hour would be good. Pastor Royston Smith, he doesn't like a long introduction, but he's someone who I met in 1985. So I've known Pastor Smith for quite a very long time. He's a minister of the gospel, former teacher, and is now the PM leader for the South England Conference. He has been here before, and he will be back again. Pastor Smith will be speaking to us, go home and tell. But before pastor comes to us to tell us how to go home and tell, we will have a song of meditation. Go ye therefore. So let's get in an attitude to receive our message for today as our praise team come and sings for us. Therefore, and teach all nations. Go, go. Just join us as we sing.
shall I say happy Sabbath everyone it's nice to be here with you and Larry said he knew me since 1985 that's how old he is and that's how young I am I think when I, when I grow up I want to be like the person who told the story um, that was amazing thank you very much um, I have been coming here for some time doing some training with you guys and I'm enjoying my time I want us to stand and read with me just a few verses from the Bible um, I usually say it takes me about 20 hours to write a sermon um, so if I go beyond an hour please don't forgive me shall we stand and just read the Bible with me just stand with me um, Mark chapter 5, just stand, we're just, we're just going to read a few verses. I mean, for some of us, this is the only time we read the Bible, so please indulge me. Um, Mark 5, I'm going to see if I can work without my glasses today. If I can't, um, Larry will come and finish the sermon. Um, let's go to chapter 5, verses 1, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I want you to read the Bible with me. And I, if you don't have a Bible, you might have a digital Bible. That's okay. But I want everybody to share the word with me. It's not. It won't come on the screen because I didn't give. You got. You, can you guys put no? Mark five, King James version, if possible. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, the, it, for me, the version doesn't matter. But um, for maybe for some people, if I preach from another version, I'll be stoned. So. <laughs> let's read together then they came to the other side we're reading together let's go then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes and when he had come out of the boat immediately there met him out of the tomb verse 3 a man with an unclean spirit let's go to the next verse who had is dwelling amongst the tombs and no one could bind him not even with with chains let's go to the next verse because he had been bound with what shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken pieces neither could anyone tame him let's go to the last verse and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tomb crying out and cutting himself with with stones let's pray father amen you may be seated it's quite a very interesting bible passage and i want you to think about it. it's quite a very interesting bible passage and i want you to um do i point where do i point or is it is it on or off uh, you know um i i seem to okay there you go right so um, it's quite quite an interesting passage. It's, it's, it's a very chilling story. And I want the young people to be listening. I like when children listen, not becoming discombobulated and distracted. I don't even know what the first word I said meant. But you'll tell me what it means at the end. Discombobulated. I don't know what it meant. All right? Create a bit of cacophony. I don't even know what that be, But it's what I'm saying. See and come back and tell me what it means. So it's a, quite a very chilling story. Chilling story. A chill that is more present today than it was yesterday. Um, because the chill and smell of the tomb is all around us. COVID tells us, didn't it? Every day, every hour, every minute, we, we hear, we see, um, we can even touch. Um, because we are not too far ourselves from the tomb of life fact of the matter is every day the tomb keeps knocking at our doors the tomb is telling is calling each of us we 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 confront our mortality every day and death doesn't just knock at the door of those who are aging but death knocks at the door if, even at those who are young the tomb is nearer than we expect the Bible tells us, read with me in 1 Timothy 3 verse 1, this and also that in the last, what, days, perilous times shall, shall come. We are indeed living in 
perilous times the tomb is calling all of us Matthew Mark chapter 5 tells us a chilling story a very chilling story of one man's reality a chill that even more that is even more real today than it was before the chill and the stench of unclean spirits and demonic forces are everywhere they control our parliament hello somebody demonic forces they they control the media demonic forces they 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 control the social system and the social order of things as a matter of fact they don't even know who is a male from who is a female even we have Christians writing emails and they have they or them even though it's one person writing or he or she even though the name is very masculine we live in a world of anarchy and confusion and conflict everywhere people are unsure as to who or what they are talk to me somebody there's no absolute these days no absolute nobody believes in anything anything goes and anything that is said what is truth nobody seems to know what truth is the Bible tells us you know the text Ephesians 6 verse 12 for we what wrestle not against what flesh and what blood you need to come back with me but against what principalities and against what powers against the rulers of darkness against spiritual wickedness in the palace in Parliament and in the police force Mark chapter 5 tells a chilling story a chilling story of one man's experience a reality that is even more real today than it was that a mind follow me this morning that a mind possessed by demons and unclean spirit is a mind that is shackled to life's tomb can I say that again a mind that is controlled and possessed by demons and unclean spirit is a mind that is shackled by the circumstances of life I'm going to say something to you now parents controlled your children's phone there's no amen for that because some of us are children control us control your child's phone because what they're watching what they're seeing on the phone is controlling their minds hello somebody can I also encourage you have one television in your house and it sits in the living room now the children are upset with me I don't care uh, but they shouldn't have uh, any kind of devices in their bedrooms it should be in one space and one place where you control it sometimes you see or you see your children behaving some ways and certain ways and wondering what is causing the child to behave this way it's because of media that we're exposing to the man the Bible says was 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 shackled he was bound in the tomb but many today are shackled and bound by the addiction of drugs many today are shackled and bound by the addiction of sex many today are shackled and bound by the addiction of their alternate lifestyle proverbs chapter 5 verse 22 read with me it says what the shadow of your sin will what overtake you you will find yourself stumbling all over yourself in the in the dark let's be honest in in Walton store today the truth is that many of us we are just existing we're not even living we're like robots robotic we're just keeping our heads above the parapet can I be more authentic many of us are basically hanging by a thread we come to church with a smile on our faces well dressed singing the songs of Moses and the Lamb we come to church preaching the sermon telling the children's story we come to church doing these excellent pastoral prayers but we are shackled chained we're hanging by a thread and many of us believe it or not are living in our own graveyards what a quiet church have mercy this morning let me hastily had 
But for the grace of God, many of us would not only be living in the graveyard, we would be lying in the graveyard. So this mentally challenged man finds himself chained, chained, shackled, and untamed. The text highlights the fact that the demons within, within him gave him extra strength, that each time he was chained, he was pulled and apart, and broke the shackles, Furthermore, his daily life was spent not just amongst the tomb, read the text when you have time, but also living in the mountains, crying day and night, cutting himself. One thing I've learned in life is simply this, that he who controls your mind controls your destiny. Can I say that again? He who controls your mind controls your destiny. Um, it, is the devil's, it is the devil's intention to control your mind. The battles we're raging today is a battle that exists between your head and your chin. In between. Somebody says, this is what Satan says. This is what the spirit of prophecy says. I have been shown that Satan has not been stupid and careless these years since his fall, but has been learning. He has grown in a more skillful way. His plants are laid deeper and are more covered with religious garments to hide their deformity. The, here's go down. The power of Satan now is to tempt and to deceive. What he wants to do is to use church as a vehicle to pass on his message. Can I say that again? The church can become your pitfall. Oh, you didn't know that. Many people have come to church, instead of finding Christ, they find something else. Satan wants to get you, my friends. Satan wants to get into your life. He wants to get control of you. He wants you to become emotionally unstable. He wants you to be running to your proverbial mountain. He wants you to be going into your tombs and, and sleeping there. Satan is not your friend. The Bible encourages us to recognize the devil's method. The Bible says that we need to know how the devil fights and what his tricks are. And that whole a second, as members of God's church, we should be fleeing, fleeing from the presence of Satan. When I was younger, I thought I could step into the devil's playground and step out unscathed. And many of us are doing the same thing. Skirting and spending time in the presence of Satan is not a commendation you're treading on dangerous ground. Let me tell you the story of the frog. Do you know the story of the frog? The boiling frog. The best way to destroy a frog is not to put the frog in cold water or put the frog in hot water, but to put the frog in room temperature water. And when you put the frog in room temperature water, you basically light the fire. And the body of the frog Are you with me? Takes the heat. And the frog thinks it's enjoying life. And before you know it, it's a cook, cooked frog. Please, children, do not try this at home. The devil is like that. What he does, he makes things look nice and lovely and succulent and you want to play with the devil you want to enjoy your time with him before you know it you are a part and parcel of who he is understand this morning uh, when someone commits a crime or hurt someone satan rejoices understand when someone yields to temptation and ends up destroying their life satan rejoices when the church is divided satan is rejoicing Don't be, don't be deceived. The devil hates you. And all his what? Promises are what? Can you see it? Read with me. Don't be deceived. The devil's cunning schemes is to what? Hide his what? Existence. Number three, don't be deceived. The devil knows what? The evidence of his existence are clear. 
the world is telling you that Satan doesn't exist it's a lie from the pit of hell Satan is real he's our enemy but but listen he also is a defeated foe uh, that is why people are celebrating Easter even those who don't believe in Christ they are celebrating Easter Easter tells us that Satan is a defeated foe hell has no power Satan has no strength Satan is what I call a no teeth dog have you ever been chased by a dog with no teeth I have and I stand and I face him I know he can't bite me because he needs the devil is a no teeth dog he has bark but he has no no bite Mark 5 declares that we're, we're in a real fight for our emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. In living, we will experience real spiritual battle with Satan and his enemy, arm of demon. We must be ready to stand firm and experience the transformative power of Jesus. He's fighting to control your mind, to possess, your, to possess you and fill you with legions. If you spend some time reading the text, you will notice there's a lot of movements in the text. People are being sent from one place to another. Read the text. As you read the narrative, you'll notice that the demonic is sent into the graveyard. Read the text that Jesus sent the pigs into the demons. Witnesses are sent back to the village. And, 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 and the villagers are running Jesus away. I don't know if I want to stop here in my sermon and make a statement to somebody. Maybe God wants to send you into something or God wants to send you out of something. I don't know your situation. I don't know your condition, your current situation. I'm unsure of your state. What you need to be sent out of or where God needs to send you. Maybe some of us are in a situation at the moment that we need the hand of God to send us out of a situation. Mark chapter 5. Let's go there. Here be Jesus suffer him saying, but said unto him what? Go home to thy what? Friends and tell them how what? Great things the Lord had what? And had compassion for thee. Have you noticed in the text the man is in the tomb and he has friends. Come with me this morning. The man is living in a graveyard and he has what? Friends. Someone who has friends um, should not be homeless. Come on now. Shouldn't be living in a graveyard, living amongst the tomb. I thought that friends were to be there for you in thick and in thin, in crisis and emotional times. People who are there for you to, to, to rub shoulder to shoulder. When I find myself in challenging moments, I want my friends to be there with me. Understand, life has taught me that there are times when our friendship can become a burden and a blade. Hello, somebody. Understand that friendship can become a one-way street. Understand that friendship can be weary and uphill task when you're running on empty. Have you ever suffered from friendship fatigue? Let me ask you these questions. Do some people exhaust you? Do they overwhelm you? Don't look at anybody in the church now. Do they make you tired sometimes? Do they stress you out? Do some people just bring drama into your life? Come on, talk to me this morning. Be honest now. You know, sometimes the phone rings as a pastor and I see the name. I see the name. I see the name. And I said, Lord, have mercy. Don't you have that experience? If the answer is yes, you're suffering from friendship fatigue. You are overgiving and over supporting and over embracing. Uh, you are giving so much. Some people sometimes exhaust you to the point in time that you just don't really want to talk to them. Oh, not that you don't love them, but they exhaust you. 
And there's some friendship, it's a one-way street. You're always the only one giving, and they're like a parasite. Excuse my language. Didn't meant to say that. Yes, I did. Some people are like that. They're like leeches. They take everything from you, and they never give you anything back in return. Do you have such a friend? Come on, talk to me now. I see the church is quiet because, you know, people are looking on you. And if they say you're thinking that way, they might not talk to you anymore. I'm so glad that Jesus is not like that. Amen. He says, come unto me, all you are what? Labor and are what? And I will what? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am what? Meek and lowly heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. I'm telling you when the friends, I have friends sometimes, I get, they get tired of me. I have friends sometimes, they don't want to talk to me, but, but the best friend to have is... So the Bible says that his friends, read the text. He wasn't taken to the graveyard by himself. He was taken to the graveyard by his friends. And there are some friends that we have in life who are taking us to graveyards. Read the text when you have time. An interesting thing goes, the friends didn't just take him to the graveyard not just to the graveyard the bible says they took him there and they chained him come on now watch me now some of your friends are not just taking you to the graveyard but they chained you when they take you to the graveyard oh listen to me this morning it's one thing when somebody takes you to the graveyard but when they chain you there it means that they want you to die Hey, you see, if, you, if you're taken and left to Rome, at least there would be hope of survival. Uh, even if you're out of your mind, you know where to find food. You see, he was, he was tied to the tomb, left to die by his friends. He didn't have a terminal illness. He had a mental and a demonic one. And sometimes people are misdiagnosing you for your problem. People have characterized us. They have written us off. Uh, they have compromised our health. Sadly, so many, so many have demised and have died without receiving the proper treatment. My own brother, were, 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 he was misdiagnosed. And so by the time the doctors were able to diagnose his problem, he, he, he sadly passed away. Chained to the graveyard to die. Trained, chained. Have you noticed... That many of us, the moment we get stressed or, stressed or sick, there are people who are ready to take us to the graveyard. And like swarms, I don't know about you, but as a pastor, I've seen senior people living on their own. Nobody, nobody sees them. But the moment they're about to die, like bees, people come up and pronounce their death. I've seen cases where people are actually writing people's funeral program, writing their eulogy, uh, ready to plan a repass because they believe the person is about to die. Let me say that we have people in church, out of church, who are just standing by, ready to take us to the cemetery. Even though we are not yet dead, Ah, can I say something this morning to those of you who are even planning my funeral? Oh yes, I've had people who, who thought I was dead, who, who, who thought I, I was out. Don't plan my funeral yet. You need to talk to somebody. Don't plan my repast yet. Yes, I'm chained, but I'm still alive. Oh, come on somebody. I'm living in a graveyard, but I'm still alive. Breath is still in my body. Blood is running in my vein. My brain is still active. Though I'm coming to church and I'm having problems, my relationship is breaking up. My children are giving trouble. My job ain't coming together. Yes, you're planning my death, but I'm still alive. I can still testify. Oh, I like what David says in Psalm 118 verse 17. I shall not what? Die but what? Live and what? Declare the works of our Lord. Many people are writing you off. Your children are not doing well. 
your relationship is going down life is tough they have written you off declare this text over your life this morning I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord read the text when you have time he's taken to the cemetery by his friends he's constricted by chains and he's crying day and night crying crying is a response read the text mark 5 and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tomb crying and what cutting himself with what with stones yes you see my friends uh, it is says that men don't cry is it true uh, according to research according to research women cry at least uh, 5.3 times per month I don't know what the point three is research has shown that men cry 1.3 times per month and the average tears that a woman cries is eight minutes in length according to the psychologist if she cries more than that she needs to see a psychologist Do you know that ladies live longer than men because they are able to express their emotions so the average age for men to live in the UK is 77 to 79 ladies is 84 and above that is why we have so many women in church who are widowed um, single because their husbands their spouses have died the reason for that as a matter of fact also younger men in the UK young boys most of the people who commit suicide in UK are young boys the reason for that according to psychologists is that men and boys have pent up emotions they have pent up feelings pent up anger and instead of expressing themselves they keep everything on the inside and so the only way they find to get rid of all these emotional hurt and pain that they have is to take their own lives But there are some men who do cry. Hello, men. They're quiet. There are some men who should cry. As a matter of fact, men must cry. One of the reasons why we are so stressed out as men, and have you noticed that the men age quicker than the women? Oh, the men are, I'm, going, I'm in trouble now. We get bald quicker. We, we are, look at me, I'm graying, I'm, Who said that? You will be stoned before I go from here. Men, real men, real men should cry. Uh, the devil is telling men not to cry. Can I say today that real men must cry? Uh, you, you heard me. Real men, honest men must cry. Life, men like women, we go through seasons. We have seasons of pain and seasons of problems. We have seasons of, of challenges. Uh, and the only way men, I'm talking to men, the only way, brothers, that we can, we can express these pain and these sorrows, maybe you don't want your wife or your, or your significant other to see you crying. Find your little crying spot. I have a place where I spend my time in my own tears. The Bible says that tears are a gift from God. Tears are a language to God. Tears are a call to God. Let me say to you, there's a place, there's a place, there's a place, there's a time. I don't know about you. I've had challenges and trials in my life. And my wife can't help me. My, my friends can't help me. Um, my education cannot help me. And the only person who I can turn to is to God. Remember the story of Anna, don't you? Anna, she was there. She, she was there crying. Uh, crying in the temple. You know the story. The priest came by and, and he saw her crying in distress. He didn't understand why she was crying. Remember the story of, 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 of Ezekiah. The Bible says, turn back and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus said the Lord, the Lord God of David, thy father, I have what? Heard thy what? Prayer. I have seen thy what tears behold I will heal thee on the third day thou shalt go unto the house of the Lord listen remember David crying unto the Lord the Bible says this poor man cries and the Lord what heard him and saved him out of all his 
trouble. Can I say to you this morning, when you cry, God hears, God remembers, God sees, and God knows. Remember the children of Israel. The Bible says they cry and God hears them. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, Come now, let us what? Reason together, said the Lord of hosts, though your sins be as what? Scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they be red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Follow the story. The man, the man, the man was tied up by his friends in a tomb. The man was living in a tomb. The man had nobody with him. He was cutting himself, living in the graveyard, running into the mountains. Uh, listen, time doesn't allow me to challenge the circumstances that are many people today who are self-harming. Ah, uh, Some of us, we might not be physically self-harming, but we are emotionally self-harming. Let me tell you, somebody says, memories don't live like people do. They always stay with you. There are some of us who are self-harming because when we look back over our lives, talk to me, somebody, and you see the things that you have done, you find yourself sitting in your own graveyard cutting yourself. Oh, my goodness. Ah. Uh, that bad relationship that I went into, cutting yourself. That child that I should have had, cutting yourself. Uh, that situation that I found myself in, cutting yourself. Oh, that thing that I stole yesterday, cutting yourself. Many of us, we are in church, we have been in the presence of God, but the invisible trauma of life we carry with us. And the cut that he's cutting himself, he thinks he's healing himself. And the cut he's cutting himself, he thinks he's restoring himself. But the more he cut himself is the more pain he's carrying and it is so for many of us. The more we sit and the more we pray in church is the less we're getting closer to God because life, life, life situation pains us. I've been there. I've had my own experience. The pill was sitting there. And I'm like, Lord, I think I need to end it. And I need to end it now. She was 45 years old. Only 45. Her husband died and I buried, I buried him. And I went to knock on the door. I knew somebody was there. The two cars were in the yard. And she just wouldn't open the door. But somehow the Spirit of the Lord says, keep knocking. So I kept on knocking. I walked away from the door. The Spirit says, go back and knock on that door in Boromwood. I went back and I knocked on the door. She eventually, she recognized that I'm not leaving. And so she opened the door and looked at me with a gaze. A year after, I baptized her. She told the story that, that, that she was praying that I leave that door and go about my business. She says all the tablets were sitting there, her husband's tablet, because he had died from a, from a bad bout of cancer. And she says, I was going to just take my life because I couldn't live with him anymore. But on that day, God sent you. Many of us, life is getting to us. Life is getting to us. We are chained. Many of us, life is breaking us. We are chained. Many of us, we come to church 
and life looks well in our lives, but we are chained, bound in the tomb. We are chained. So here was the man in a tomb, chained by his friends, in a tomb, possessed by demons. The Bible says, the Bible is clear, he was chained, he was in a tomb, running from one place to the next, uncertain as to what's going to happen to him. Mark 5, I'm coming to a close. Verse 2 says, And when he come out of the boat immediately, there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. Interesting, as I close, interesting, that the man was possessed by demons. He was tormented by demons. When you have time, read the text. And, and, and when the man was, 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 when he saw Jesus, the Bible says that immediately he, 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 he ran to Jesus. And the demon started to, to have a conversation with Jesus. Now, if you ever go to Montego Bay, uh, for those of you from Jamaica, from, from those of you from Westmoreland, there was a house, it was called a haunted house, uh, just going in Ramble, just over the, the hillside. If you go there, and there are large stones going onto the house, it's, I'm not telling you a fib now, and the stones were not breaking the windows, they were going through the windows. As a matter of fact, nobody wanted to live. Nobody wanted to buy that house. As a matter of fact, the house is locked up even today. Demons exist. The devil exists. The man was possessed by demons. I was talking to a friend uh, yesterday and he was telling me that the house, uh, the house was there and, and a pastor was invited to come and pray and he took an elder with him to pray over the demons. But, but the moment they started praying, the demon said to the pastor, leave and leave now. And he said, the moment the pastor left the house and the elder started praying, the demon left. Because the pastor was disconnected from God. Notice the text says, and when he come out of the boat, immediately they met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit. And the spirit started talking, not to the man, but he started talking to Jesus. Listen to what the demon says. I don't have time to tell you. They said, Lord, Lord, don't, don't, don't send us out of the region, but send us into those pigs. Don't send us away. And, and the Bible says that Jesus took them by their word. And Jesus spoke a word. Not a storm, but just a word. Not a wind, but just a word. Notice in the text that he was possessed by legions. There were 2,000 pigs there. And this man, for years, lived in a tomb, possessed by devils, possessed by demons. And the devil couldn't destroy him hello somebody there's hope for you this morning there's hope for you i don't know what is happening in your life i don't know what the devil is trying to do in your life but you're in church this morning you're sitting at the feet of jesus read the text when you have time the bible says when the friends came, when they came, they saw the man, the man who was possessed by 2,000 demons sitting at the feet of Jesus. Oh, by the way, read the text. Have you noticed that all 2,000 pigs died? But there was something in the man. He was possessed by demons. He was chained in a tomb, but he had hope. My friends, my hope is built and nothing less. Oh yes, I'm coming to church and, and life is not good for me, but my hope is built and nothing less. Everybody in the church thinks I'm hopeless, but my hope 
is built on nothing less. My children are giving me heartache and, and everybody thinks that everything is going to go bad, but my hope is built on nothing less. The Bible says the man, when he saw Jesus coming, he ran to Jesus. Where's the praise team to sing the closing song? He ran to Jesus. And Jesus says to the demon, get out of the man. The time has come when members in this church need to say to the devil, get out of Walton Stowe Church. You need to go home right now, some of you, and pray in the name of Jesus. Satan, get out of my house. And if your marriage is in trouble, you need to pray to Satan and say, get out of my marriage. If your child is giving you trouble, put your hand on that child and say to the devil, get out of that child in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Satan, you are extinguished. And stand up and be strong. Strange the story says, the man says, Lord, Lord, can I come with you? He says, don't come with me. Go home and go home and tell. And notice he says, go home to your friends. Read the text. Go home to your friends and tell. You know the people who have written you off. Go and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. You know the people who thought your marriage was going to die. And after 50 years you are still married. Go home to them and tell them. You know the people who thought that your child was going to be nothing or nobody. But the Lord is blessing your child. And your child is growing from strength to strength. Go back home and tell them. You know who those who thought that Walton Stowe Church was going to be a dead church? Go home and tell them that God is still here. Go home and tell the great things that God has done in your life. Yes, there might, where's the praise team? There might be demons. There might be 2,000 demons in your life. You might be in a graveyard. You might be ch chained. But you are still alive. And Jesus is passing your way. Amen.
Thus I would go on missions of mercy. I've had my own my own personal experiences I've been I've been in my own graveyard but I've always kept my eyes on Jesus now it might sound silly for some people what nonsense but every time I keep my eyes on Jesus things change in my life so maybe I'm just gonna make a call for somebody I don't know if you're if you're having a graveyard experience and you just want to say, Lord, I want to keep my eyes on you. I'm just going to call, not just a minute. I promise I'm going to finish by 1.30. I'm, I'm told you normally finish at 2 anyway, so it's fine. So it's still, we're still close, half an hour. But I just want to call somebody to, to say, what are you going through? You just want to say, Lord, take full control. Just, just come forward. Because you want to go home and tell somebody, you know what? God has done great things for me and to this I'm glad somebody you want to come you want to come you're having a, a graveyard experience you want to say Lord Lord I'm going through a graveyard at the moment I'm chained maybe you're chained by your relationship maybe you're chained by your own child maybe you're chained by your workplace maybe you're chained by circumstances and you want to say Today, before I leave this church upon the authority of the word of God, chains ain't going to hold me back anymore. Somehow I'm, in, I'm impressed to sing the song, Praise God, I'm free. Somehow I've been set free by the grace of God. You want to step out and say, Lord, today in Walthamstow Church, chains are falling and chains are going to be broken in my life today. There's going to be a, a, ra a, a radical turnaround. I'm going to step out of the graveyard. I'm going to walk away from the tomb. I'm going to go back home to the bed I haven't slept in for a long time. I'm going to go back home to the friends who have forsaken me. I'm going to go back home because now I'm no longer in a graveyard. Praise God, I'm free. No more change somebody else. Chains holding you want to step out and say, Lord, my soul is resting. My soul is resting. Oh, what a blessing. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. Chains holding me. Oh, oh, what a blessing. Oh, what a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. One more time. One more time. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. My soul is resting. Oh, what a blessing. Oh, what a blessing. Lord, I feel freedom walking in this church this morning. I don't know what members in your church are going through, but I feel the chains 
falling chain of unfulfilled expectations are falling chains of rejection and chains of being felt unwanted the chain of life and challenges and the chain that are holding us back I feel today Lord that the chains are falling not only do I feel chains falling in this church but I see members of your church walking away from the tomb walking away from the graveyard and they're stepping into their destiny Lord my sister was walked out I don't know what her circumstances is but today upon the authority of the Word of God I'm declaring that she's free no longer bound Lord lift your people up and set us free and Lord may this church Walton Stowe Church on Boundary Road may this church be a blessing may this church be a place where people come and they feel free they can express themselves they can be vulnerable they can talk about their trials and their tribulation because they know that this is a church where chains are broken and people are set free so Lord may you bless your people and may you keep them and Lord may you cause your face to shine upon them may be gracious unto them lift up the light of your countenance upon each member of this church and may you set them free in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit Amen Amen. please remain standing as we sing God is good Before we take a moment of uh, reflection, I want to say thank you to Pastor Smith for coming and giving us the sermon today. Amen. And uh, you know, the Bible has a lot of stories. My children and I are watching uh, a video of one of the Bible stories yesterday evening. And you know, sometimes familiarity can make you forget what the story is about, or you can miss bits of the story. So I want to thank you for expanding the story and giving us the opportunity to think about other aspects of the story and the man in that story. I hope we can take those messages away with us today. We'll have a moment of reflection and then we will have a final song.
Okay, have you had a good Sabbath? Amen. Amen. Okay, so the service is finished. But we're going to sing an afterglow. We're going to sing soon, very soon. Um, but we're going to sing it. So if you're staying, please join us in singing. Um, and feel free to greet each other, either in here or and there's lunch provided next door. You are all invited to stay for lunch. Thank you.